Hey guys, how's it going? Back in the shed. Um, just showing you some of the little bits and pieces that I do during the week um, in between me gearing up to finish off the rest of the 4.6 build. So I actually have another 046 here. Um, actually the one we're working on is on MS460 because it's got the um, uh, the more toggleable fuel caps where there is these are the old school twisties like that. So and there's much debate over which one's better. I mean, a lot of people don't actually like the, the still flip caps. They prefer the Husqvarna ones. Sorry, I'll wash my mouth out later. It's not, it's not good. But anyway, so some of what I do is um, just maintenance stuff. And so I'll get it in and I'll, um, I'll get a tag and it'll say something like this. So, I don't think you can reach that, so read that, so um, I'll try and read it. Circlip nut in a clutch spring. So that's that's what needs to be done on this saw. So other things I'll check it over for is uh, tuning um, while I'm there. Um, and uh, also things like this, the filter. Which isn't actually too bad. I was, I was hoping tons of sawdust would fall out of that. It looked like it was going to. Because of the outside of it. But nope. So I'll blow out this. Basic, basic service. Um, and yeah. That's, that's about it. That's about it. All I do. Basic, basic service. Fix whatever's wrong. And um, yeah. Get on with it. So um, on this saw. I've got one nut off. I'll... Um, I've got only one bar nut because the other one's gone west. People who use these saws are learning how to use these saws so they don't often um, know how to put everything back together or they're just learning or um, they're um, misplaced parts quite easily because you can't remember what goes where or what goes in it because they're just learning, they're just learning and that's cool, gotta learn somehow. Anyway, these are the saws I'm learning on. Um, so I sort of piece them back together. And most of what I do is actually place um, the E clips and the um, clutch keepers on these saws. I've got, I've got bucket loads of them. Um, now I'll look down here. Uh, see, there's, there's some, there's a couple there. And I've got more down in the box here as well. <clears throat> a ton of, I've got more than these are just some of the bar nuts, but there's more down there. Um, <clears throat> it's, a, um, it's a little kit I, I use. I'll just I'm gonna show you actually. It's a little kit I use for these guys. Um, I'm not gonna say the customer's name because yeah, but this little kit is what I use to um, fix up their saws. So I don't use anything out of this for personal part. That's all for them. I've just got this here, so it's handy for me. So they can give me saws, and we don't have to go. Oh, what parts we got again? What do we need to order? I just know I've got this stuff here, and I can help sort it out. So it's all sorts of things, all sorts of still goodies in there. A couple of little bit of Husqvarna stuff, but they're mainly phasing out the Husqvarna um, stuff since since I'm come along. I'm slowly getting rid of it all. And uh, they're all using steel pretty much now, which is cool. I'm trying to get them to buy a steel 500 i too because that would be epic. But anyway, um, on with this. I'll just take this bar off and then I'll, I'll give you a look at what's what's basically going on. Yeah. Oh wow, well, that's interesting. Okay, that's interesting already. Sorry, juggling a couple of things. Yeah. Right, so when, straight away I noticed when I took this off, um, this is what fell out, that's the needle cage bearing, <laughs> it's uh, missing its rollers, <laughs> and um, the sprocket of course come off because there's no, there's no keeper or anything like that, 
Um, inside of that clutch needs a clean out. A lot of what I do is cleaning as well. Um, and it said it's clutch spring. It said a clutch spring, but um, clutch springs are all fine. All the plates are there. I'm just giving them a jiggle around to make sure I'm not missing anything. No, nothing's nothing's jangling around in there. Okay. Um so on the saw we need a needle cage bearing. Um we've got the sprocket. Sprocket is halfway through its life. On the wear, little um, these little shinier indications where the chain hits. Um, you can actually get um, if I can find it. Oh, it's right here. I, I don't know these things. I'm trying to get it out. These things. I got it when I was up at still one time. Just clean it off. And I don't know how good they are. I don't really use it. But it's got two little nodules on the end there. And I um, was up at Still in Auckland one time. And um, 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 and uh, this, is, um, this is the part number on it. I don't know if you can see. But this basically is a rim sprocket checker okay so if that doesn't touch any metal like that on there those little nodules then um, you need to replace your sprocket but I kind of just eye them up you know um, that's still it's not even halfway through its life it's still really good actually according to that so maybe it is worth it but yeah just I don't know something Something gimmicky, I think, still came up with for their technicians. It's yeah, got it free anyway from Still, so that was cool. Right, so now I need to find if I have down here a needle cage for a four six. I don't know if I do. I do have one, but it's one of my own, so I'll probably chuck it in and, um, and then just get them to replace it so we can get this saw on the, on the road again. They're pretty good about that sort of thing. They just replace whatever whatever I want. Pretty trusting with me, which is cool. I like to um, keep on of that, on of that trust with them. Um, I'm sure I had a needle cage in here. Dreaming. I know I have one for Frank for building the next 4.6. I know I have one for that. I'm sure I had two of them. Ah, oh, yes, here we go. Digging around my parts. So, just in case you didn't know, that's what it's supposed to look like. This is a good one. This is a not so good one. You're not supposed to be able to see through them. Anyway. Fun, fun. Alright, so, I mean, you guys know how to do this, right? You know how to sort out a needle cage bearing. Um, remember to grease it.
I'm going to grease it. And then we um, put our clutch on, of course. Sprocket goes on. That's not, a, that's not a genuine one, that one. And then, <clears throat> from down in the depths. Now, let's see if I've got some other ones. Try it. Uh, and a secret. I had some lighter. Sort of more new school ones there, but I um, thought I'd use this heavier gauge one for a 4.6 on the old 4.6. This is a heavier gauge keeper. Uh, that goes on there like that. And then I just clip it on its side, grab my pliers. And there's a new circlip there. Oh, it's gone west. New circlip there. And these ones are always on an angle, so they're really tough to go in, but kind of what you need, you need your circlip to stay in there. Sometimes I do this as well. Let's get it on the edge. Nice gentle tap in. That's what it needed. Cool, and that's mean on there now. So that's um, it's part of the service. What I do, of course, I'll um, I'll run the saw up and and uh, and uh, make sure the tuning's all going well. I don't check the sharpen of the chain. They do that. That's their job to sharpen the chains because um, they've got to learn learning. And if I do it for, I did one the other day though on that, um, the new 2.6 after I got it going, after that rebuild, I, um, I, oh, what did I, I sharpened it because it was, it was the last sharpen it's ever going to have and the angles were just so freaky weird, um, I've never seen anything like it, so I finished it up, um, so I told, told my mate to chuck it after that, chuck that chain. But, um, yeah, anyway, oh, interesting development, though. I don't know what's happened, but the 2.6 that I just rebuilt, they tried it, and the flywheel's come off it, and uh, sheared off the flywheel key, uh, which is part of the, the flywheel. I do have another flywheel here, which is cool. But, um, weird. I thought I'd tighten it up and everything, so um, when I get that back here, I might chuck it on video and just, hey, troubleshoot that, because I said I was going to troubleshoot anything on that saw as well. But yeah, just a just a cool midweek one, um, or just about end of the week really, and um, yeah, we'll um, we'll leave it there. So that's that's some of what I do. Um, I've got a pull cord to replace. Um, I've done videos on that before. I've done videos on this stuff before. Um, I had a look at a faulty decomp before. I was going to show you that, but it wasn't a faulty decomp. Sometimes I, when they're learning, they they say things are broken, but they're not, and so I have to figure out, is the part broken? Does it need replacing? And that kind of thing, and sort of work it through the whole process until um, I've, I've got a good result with a working saw again. And um, yeah, some of them I get the tags on, says don't start, and I pull them over and they start first pop, and I'm like, okay, weird. So I tune it and give it back in case that was an issue, but sometimes um, the people who are learning on these saws just aren't simply strong enough to pull them over. 
um, they haven't learned the technique for a big saw. Even a small person can start a big saw if they've got good good technique, if they know what that saw is doing and how it's operating. Because I'm not the biggest guy and I can, you know, pull over a 4.6 pretty easy, so, or a 4.6 or a 4.6.6, um, or six, six, you know, without a decomp, easy. Just got to learn to operate those saws. But yeah, cool. Anyway, I'm going to go get my dinner. And um, so thanks for watching, guys. And we'll see you on the next one. And stay still for life. And we'll catch you later.